Macomb was a tired old town, even in 1932 when I first knew it. Somehow it was hotter then. Men's stiff collars wilted by nine in the morning. Ladies bathed before noon, after their three o'clock naps. And by nightfall were like soft tea cakes with frostings of sweat and sweet talcum. The day was 24 hours long, but it seemed longer. There was no hurry, for there was nowhere to go, nothing to buy, no money to buy it with, although Maycomb County had recently been told that it had nothing to fear but fear itself. When I was almost six, and Jem was nearly ten, our summertime boundaries were Mrs. Henry Lafayette DuBose's house, two doors to the north of us, and the Radley Place, three doors to the south. We were never tempted to break them. The Radley place was inhabited by an unknown entity, the mere description of whom was enough to make us behave for days on end. Mrs. DuBose was plain hell. That was the summer Dill came to us. I bet you my great news that you won't go and test the house again. I don't know. It's scary. Don't do it, Jam. Come on, hurry up. Don't I, do it. If I do it, you better not be saying anything different the minute I get back. Well, hurry up then. I'm going, don't rush me. Don't do it. One Saturday, Jem and I decided to go exploring with our air rifles to see if we could find a rabbit or a squirrel. We had gone about 500 yards beyond the Radley place when I noticed Jem squinting at something down the street. He had turned his head to one side and was looking out of the corners of his eyes. Don't waste time, Pat. You know, I guess I'm not a good shot. I feel a whole lot better if you do this yourself. Mr. Bowes? My, you look like a picture this afternoon. You don't see a picture of your The flowers of Buckingham Palace cannot compare to yours. All well, they're not as good as last year. Well, can not seeing you, Mr. Bowes. Hey, Haddington's, where are you going? Yeah, where are you going? Well, can we come with? Are you just getting tired? No. You guys can come then. Okay. 
You Negro lover. Approached the bedside, Reagan seemed to hug herself, her hands caressing her arms. Alright, Scout, it's not raining for tonight. Oh, what time is it? It's 8 30. May I see your watch? To Arcus, my beloved husband. Jeff says he's gonna get this watch one day. Well, it's custom for the son to receive his father's watch. You got anything for me? Well, there is a pearl necklace and a diamond ring that I have put away that belong to your mother. And it will be yours someday. That's mm -hmm. right, Good night, Arcus. Good night, Jim. Good night. Jim? Yeah? How old was I when Mama died? Two. How old were you when Mama died? Six. As old as me? Mm-hmm. Was Mama pretty? Was Mama nice? Good evening, Atticus. Good evening, Judge. Sorry, Mrs. Taylor. She's fine, fine. Thank you. That's good. So have you heard about Tom Robinson lately? Yes, sir. The grand jury will be having a trial. So I understand you're busy with your practice and your kids. Miss Caroline printed her name on the blackboard and said, This says I am Miss Caroline Fisher. I am from North Alabama from Winston County. Miss Caroline began the day by reading us a story about cats. The cats had long conversations with one another. They wore cunning little clothes and lived in a warm house beneath the kitchen stove. By the time Mrs. Cat called the drugstore for an order of chocolate malted mice, the class was wriggling like a bucket full of catabol worms. Miss Caroline seemed unaware that the ragged, denim-shirted, and flower sack skirted first grade most of whom had chopped cotton and fed hogs from the time they were able to walk, were immune to imaginative literature. Miss Caroline came to the end of the story and said, Oh my, wasn't that nice? He's a cunning man, Miss Caroline. He doesn't accept anything that I can't pay back, especially not money. Jean and Louise have had about enough of you this morning. <laughs> Come over here. Hold out your hand. Now go back to your seat.
strange about them. <gasps> they look like us. is the Radley place. Their boy Boo, when he was working on a scrapbook, he was cutting up the pictures with the scissors and he stabbed his dad right in the leg as he was walking by. He was hooting and hollering everywhere. It was crazy. You reckon he's crazy? Probably. I wanna go check it out. I'm going. Jam, no! Jam! he could find around the neighborhood. A bunch of people were complaining about missing cats the other week, and the weeks before. Dead. Just all the time. What do you reckon he looks like? Well, judging from his tracks, he's about six feet tall, and he's real slender like. He's got blonde hair, and he like crouches over most of the time, and he drools a lot. Oh, and he has a huge scar across his face. Yeah. I want to go see him. Jim! Jim, get back here! Jim! The trial has begun. In your own words, Mr. Tate, can you please describe what happened that day? I was called. Ca please say it to the jury. Called by who? Called by Mr. Bob Ewell around night time. What night, sir? It was the 9 November 21st. 
Mr. Buell called me, and he said some Negro raped his girl. Well, did you go? I hurried as fast as I could, sir. And what'd you find? Found her lying on the floor. She seemed pretty beat up. I went to her feet and she asked who did it. She said Tom Robinson. I asked her if he beat her like that. She said yes. I asked her who took advantage of her. She said yes. Sheriff, did anybody call a doctor? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? So help me God. I swear to God. <sighs> Mr. Yule? Not my name, Captain. Are you the father of May Yellow Yule? Yes, sir. Well, on the night of November 21st, I was coming home from the woods with a load of kindling in my hands. And just as I got to the fence, I heard my Mayella screaming like a stick hog inside the house. What time is it, Mr. Yule? Just from sundown. And you said she was screaming? She was screaming in the house. <laughs> Mr. Yule, am I asking you a few questions? Sure. Mr. Yule! You focus a whole lot on that night. You say you ran to the fence, you ran into the window, you ran to Mayela, and you ran to the sheriff. Did you, at any of this time, run for a doctor? I didn't see your own need for it. There's one thing I don't understand, Mr. Yule. If you're so concerned with Mayela's condition, why didn't you call the doctor? I didn't see any reason why. Mr. Yule, can you read and write? Yeah, I can read. So, I see you. Since you can read and you can write, you wouldn't mind if you could write your name on this envelope? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Yule. Well, you're left handed, Mr. Yule. Yeah, so? Hey! What's the big idea here? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. Yeah. That must have been disorderly, Tom. What did it consist of? Well, another man tried to fight me. He tried to cut me, sir. Were you hurt? Uh, yes, a little, but I moved like this, so I was I see. Were you both convicted? No, sir. I I didn't have the money to pay off the fines, but the other man did. I see. When did you ask her to chop up the the ship room? Uh, it was last spring, sir. I only had my hoe with me when I was walking by. She asked me to come in and bust up the ship room for her. I said I only had this hoe. She said, well, I reckon I have to give you a nap. Did you ever go back to the place again? Yes, sir. When? Lots of times, sir. Under what circumstances? I'd just be passing by and she'd ask me to do little favors for her. What would she give you for your services? Nothing, sir. I just like up there. Up to your goodness? Yes, sir. Did you ever go onto your property without an express invitation 
for more than that. No, sir. Tom, did she ever speak to you? Yes, sir. Every time I'd pass by, I'd tip my hat. One day, she asked me to come in the fence and bust up a shiver over her. I hear something. I don't hear nothing. I hear it again. But when you stop, I don't hear it no more. Well, Halloween's got gotcha. you. I hear it too. Oh, I bet it's just old Cecil Jacobs trying to trick us. Cecil Jacobs is a big white hen! Come on. Flowers with sickness and little things in between. Boo was our neighbor. He gave us two soap dolls, a broken watch and chain, a knife, and our lives. One time, Atticus said, you never really knew a man until you stood in his shoes and walked around in them. Just standing on the Radley porch was enough. The summer that had begun so long ago had ended. And another summer had taken its place. And a fall. And Boo Radley had come out. I was to think of these days many times. Of Jim and Dill and Boo Radley and Tom Robinson.
be in Jem's room all night. And he would be there when Jem waked up in the morning. <laughs>